Hello guys, this is gonna be a nice little short video on the EDAR gene and East Asians. The location, uh, the EDAR gene, also known as ectodysplasin A receptor, is located on chromosome uh, 2 in this region Q11 to Q13. I show you on this uh, image where exactly that is located. So you see the big from the beginning to the end of chromosome 2. Uh, Q11 to Q13, that is kind of like right in the middle of chromosome 2. Um, EDAR, ectodysplasin in the name, you can already tell that it has something to do with the skin because it has ecto, uh, that has to do with skin basically. Mutations or variations in the EDAR gene can lead to various phenotypic traits and conditions. So what EDAR is implicated in? EDAI, EDAR variations have been linked to a number of other traits and conditions. One notable example uh, is the East Asian EDAR variant. By other, I mean other than uh, mongoloid traits, mongoloid facial features. Uh, one notable exception is the Asian-specific EDAR variant, which is associated with traits such as increased hair thickness, increased sweat gland des des density and a higher number of mammary glands. These variations are believed to have played a role in adaptations to colder climates and have been subject to positive selection in East Asian populations. Regarding single nucleotide polymorphism, which are SNPs in the EDAR gene, one of the most important ones is RS3, uh, I'm not gonna name this, I'm gonna, I mention it later in uh, the video. This is the V370A variant and it is responsible for distinctive features mentioned earlier, including shovel-shaped incisors and the thick hair phenotype. Uh, the EDAR gene plays a role in ectodermal development, which includes the formation of facial structures. Specific variations in the EDAR gene, such as this variant, have been associated with the development of epicanthic folds and other features common in East Asian populations. Uh, this is the allele frequencies of this variant, which is the V370A. So we can see that the Koreans and the Japanese mostly have uh, G, mostly have uh, G alleles for this variant. Uh, Koreans have the G alleles at a higher frequency than the Japanese. Uh, Americans have pretty much split evenly between A and G. Native Hawaiians also split evenly between A and G. Mexicans kind of split evenly. But then when you look at um, Europeans, like Netherlands, Estonians, Finnish, uh, there isn't much G except for Finnish. Finnish have the G allele frequency at a, at a frequency of 0.556%. So that means about 10% of Finnish people have uh, G allele in total. So if you, can, if you, if you count uh, the people who have GG plus AG, that would be around 10% of Finnish people, which is quite a big number. Uh, Africans don't really have the GLEO, as you can see. So this is one SNP within the EDAR. It's, this is at the intron. I misspelled. I spelled introd. It's intron, uh, region of EDAR. I think it comes uh, right um, before EDAR, but it's, it's kind of like, like right there. Uh, the G allele correlates with thicker facial hair. So if you look at where the G allele is most common, it's most common in South Asians. South Asians have the G allele at the highest frequency of 82.9%, followed by Central South Asians, which is like, it's not it's not Central Asians. Just because it has Central and Asia in the name doesn't mean it's Central Asians. It's like Af Afghans, uh, Pashtuns, Baloch, you know, so it's not Central Asians. Uh, when you look at the actual central agents in the very end, it is you know, it is 0.639% uh, have uh, the G allele. Uh, the Near East f comes right after Africa, which is very interesting. I don't really associate Africans with thick facial hair. Maybe they have other genes that um, that make them less hairy. Estonians, then central agents, then Japanese. Other trains traits influenced by EDAR. So this is NP. Uh, the A allele is, in, is correlated with uh, cardiovascular risk, heart disease, and that is East Asian ancestry. 
uh, here. I can't. I couldn't really figure out which uh, allele correlates with what. I just know this this SNP is implicated in cleft lip or cleft palate. I was doing my research. I couldn't find which SNP is actually the one that causes cleft lip or cleft palate. And this SNP is a pretty cool one. Uh, the A allele correlates with straight hair. Typically, East Asian alleles in EDAR were found in 50% of Matala hunter-gatherers in Sweden. So, I don't remember, was it 6 or was it 12 genomes that we had? I think it was, uh, I think it was 6 genomes. And 3 out of those 6 had the derived, the East Asian EDAR. Um, it could have been 6 and 12, but I think it was 3 and 6. I don't remember exactly. Haven't uh, done my research into Matala in quite a long time. Uh, the EDAR V three hundred seventy eight. So this is the one I've been talking about earlier. It's this one. Uh, it's associated with several phenotypic traits, including thicker hair, uh, increased sweat gland density, and a higher number of mammary glands. These features may have provided adaptive advantages in colder environments. Thicker hair can provide insulation and help retain heat. Re increased sweat gland density may enhance thermoregulation and a higher number of mammary glands may have aided in providing adequate nourishment to offsprings in colder climates. Additionally, studies have shown that EDAR V370A, which is, uh, which is this uh, variant is associated with changes in facial structure, such as smaller chin and altered distribution of subcutaneous fat which may help minimize heat loss in colder environments. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, like, and if you want to see more such videos, comment what you want to see, subscribe. Goodbye.